Okay, I know he just walked in the door, but Chuck Haynes is the uh, director for the uh, York County Office of Emergency Management. And Chuck, thank you so much for swinging by the microphones. We're going to get an update about where we are with the cleanup as we move forward from Saturday's macro burst. I got right. the, new term for all. That's it. I was <laughs> so I'm slowing down because I want to say micro that's right. and it's a macro burst yep. which you explained that to us on Monday so I really paid close attention now in <laughs> class. I didn't in school but when you were talking I did. <laughs> You're a good teacher. Good news no pop test uh, <laughs> today. Okay. So um yeah so uh macro burst uh we've actually got a lot of attention in the you know meteorologist world there a lot of people have never seen this, uh, more of a, uh, you know, Great Plains type of event. Uh, some of the radar readings they were getting for this area was just unheard of for the amount of ice that was in the storm. Uh, so really an incredible event. Uh, we've been told that was that there's a uh, less than 5% chance of this ever happening, not in a year, like ever. And oh, so wow. all the elements kind of all came together and, and created um, a storm not only a storm quickly, but it created ice quickly, and then you just dumped it all in in South Rock Hill, York County, mm. uh, unfortunately. But uh, so I guess to to give you a little update on what's been going on and and kind of the path forward, uh, there's a lot of people with uh, you know damage to homes, uh, some more than others. Uh, the cars are damaged and things like that. Um, so we've been going after, you know, any kind of federal program that we make it get money, reimbursement type, money to ind- individuals and things like that. Uh, and then there's, you know, some kind of follow-on programs that are out there, too, that are kind of a little less heard of uh, than your the big stuff that we're used to knowing about. But the way you get to those programs is you have to um, prove that you have a certain amount of damage in the community or a certain amount of damage to, you know, public things like parks and government centers stuff like that and so we've been uh working very hard to um establish you know how much damage we have and so um that's uh, sort of what what our goal has been and, and our goal with that is obviously to kind of get help brought in so if you ridden around um it's it's really something to take in all the you know the damage the, the problem is in the FEMA program, um, they look for structural damage. And a lot of the stuff we're seeing with the hail is, is cos- it's cosmetic. It's, it's, it's still problematic. You know, you, you can't have a hole in your roof and you can't have that, but it's not a collapse. And so um, for, uh, for us to qualify for the FEMA program to put, you know, money in people's pocket, we have to have 100 homes destroyed. And we, you know, we don't have that. And so um, then for government to get money, we have to have about twelve, uh, ten and a half million dollars worth of damage on, on the public side. We don't have that either. And so we fall in this trap of a no man's land. We're not big enough to get federal funds, but it, it's a, a huge burden to the people that are going through this. And so um, the path forward is to qualify for, for some smaller stuff through the Small Business Administration, and we hope to, you know, complete some work on that and some requests today. That would bring um, the ability for people to get low-interest loans to repair their homes and, 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 and things like that. That is not a guarantee. They have to come out and, and look, and you, they do deny sometimes uh, communities. But that's a potential path forward. But the big thing that we are working on and have been working on uh, in the city of Rock Hill, uh, have been doing this as well and in coordination with each other it, are these volunteer groups and and people that are coming out to help and so with these storms uh even though it's not the you know handing out credit cards people are showing up from out of town and other places and um to do work for free um not necessarily the absolute best answer but just doing a huge amount of work um there's a lot of debris down on private property which government can't go on private property and and do work uh for many reasons but um so people who aren't able to cut up their trees and get them to the road um that's where these uh nonprofits uh come in you have the um 
the Baptist Association. They have chainsaw crews out there. Uh, we've partnered with um, a group called uh, Team Rubicon. Um, as of yesterday, we're bringing them in, met with leadership, and um, it's a huge national organization, hopefully to get a bunch of folks in to do similar work and other work too. But um, the challenge with this is going to be how to get people – you know, how do they get their cars prepared so they can go to work? How do they, you know, get their siding put back on their house? You know, their roof, uh, if they don't have insurance, how do they get the roof repaired? Um, and and some people, you know, are very fortunate, have insurance, call the, call the company, magic happens, and you're back to normal. There's a lot who don't. And so uh, those are the people uh, that uh, we kind of have to find – how to how to get them back to, to normal and uh you know city of rock hill is doing a fantastic job we've been talking daily um you know trying to connect all these people and and then us working with them and you know state resources and, and that sort of thing we did a, a huge survey of the damage yesterday with the state emergency management division in and um and so today we go back and put together numbers and and really try to go after some of these um uh, programs for people to get loans. What do those homeowners need to do right now that do not have insurance and they're struggling? The ones you've described, do they need to reach out to a specific office, take pictures and document? What's the best plan of action for them? How'd you know I was going to say that? <laughs> <laughs> Script. Uh, so ironically, that wasn't planned. Uh, so we are hoping to roll out a uh, system that is going to start connecting people uh, who have needs with resources. And so hopefully there's some, some stuff to come today on that, but, you know, document what you have. Uh, they can certainly report it, um, to our office, um, at, uh, 803-326-2300. And, uh, but hopefully we'll have something better than our phone number, uh, today. Hopefully that'll be a, um, a website that we've been working kind of behind the scenes to get set up. Um, and what that will do is, um, uh, for lack of a better term, it's almost like a, um, a Craigslist scenario where you say, well, you know, I've got three trees in my yard and people in the nonprofit world vetted people in the nonprofit world who are working in our area with us. We'll see that and say, I can do that. And then somebody would say, well, I have a hole in my roof. And then another group will say, well, we, we've got that. And so what it's going to do for us is not only give us the ability to track needs and make sure no one slips through the cracks, but it also uh, connects uh, the group. So they're in uh, mm. kind of duplication of effort. Like, you know, everybody knocking on the door. Can we? Can I fix your roof? You know, that, So you can see that, who's going where at what time. Right, right. Would that website or that link or however that's going to be presented, would that be something that would be on the Office of Emergency Management's website or through the county? Like, where should folks be looking for that? Yep. So um, we're, we're waiting just for a couple of things to happen, but um, – Hopefully, uh, you'll see that uh, as a link that comes out. Uh, we'll push it to social media. Uh, and, and honestly, we're going to go out and actually hand out old school flyers to people and even help them. And, and you know, um, everyone isn't sitting in front of a computer or, you know, right. have a phone on their hip. And this is also where people who, if they just need help with the trees, like cutting mm -hmm. up the – so it's it's for anything dealing oh, yeah. with the storm. So yep. it would be any way f to, to mix groups with – private homeowners right the only thing that uh it isn't set up to do is uh pass finances so right. this is services okay all right again uh, we're speaking with chuck haynes he is the director of uh, the office of york county emergency management providing an update on where we are right now in terms of cleaning up after saturday's macro burst and what the plan is moving forward again Pay close attention when you can uh, today to social media, to websites, through the Office of Emergency Management or through the county government. And keep it tuned right here to WRHI and CN2. Once we get that information in hand, we'll push it out to you. Because to your point, Chuck, people are working and they're removing debris and repairing stuff. They're not going to want to s sit by their computer <laughs> looking for that stuff. Um, but I'm glad you passed that along. I think in so many cases, to your point, th the dollar amounts you've revealed to us of how people qualify we're we're not gonna we, we are in no man's land in a gray area but that doesn't mean that people still 
won't get the help that they need and deserve. I mean, sure. their life has been changed dramatically. It's just how these programs work. For right. Sure. And unfortunately, uh, our state does not have a disaster fund. Mm-hmm. So, you know, some states do. So that's not something we can go after either. So do, um, do we have any concept yet of an idea of the estimate of the damage from what we've seen here? I, I know, I think on Monday, you, you all said it was going to be later this week. Will we get those kind of facts and figures? So for government damages and, and public damages, we won't know until we ha- we've we hauled all the debris, and, and that's going to be a long time. So final numbers, you know, we're not going to know for a while. But uh, we have to lean on some insurance companies to give us data. So, uh, you know, that that is kind of tough. Um, we Yesterday we've, we kind of identified the top 25 uh most damaged homes and, and businesses and so we're putting values on those today so we're, we're building that uh it's actually a little slower than we thought uh because there's so much damage out there i don't know if you've ridden around mm-hmm. but it's just house after house of um you know either hail damage or roof damage and and um even though it may not be uh structurally uh significant uh, you have to comb through it all to figure out, mm-hmm. well, did the tree go in the house or is it just leaning on the house? And mm-hmm. so it slowed us down a little bit. So the, the times moved up. That won't impact service, though. This is just behind the scenes work. Well, we appreciate the update again from uh, where we stand following the aftermath of Saturday's storm as the path to move forward is to make sure that people get the services and the help that they need, for one. Um, and get their lives back on track, and two, uh, to make sure those who um, don't have the means to do so qualify for whatever programs and funds are out there. Chuck Haynes, again, is the director for the Office of York County Emergency Management.